Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the previous video, we talked about the characteristics of Clostridium difficile. Today, we'll dig deeper and talk about the clinical diseases, pseudomembranous colitis and toxic megacolon. Are these the only possible clinical pictures? No. Many people are asymptomatic. They just have C. diff living inside their colon, causing no symptoms whatsoever. Other people have self-limiting diarrhea and gastroenteritis. But the full-blown picture is the pseudomembranous colitis and the more severe toxic megacolon. This can kill you. If you have watched my previous video titled Diphtheria in the Microbiology and Infectious Diseases Playlist, You've learned about the pseudomembranous pharyngitis. It's a grayish necrotic pseudomembrane that's firmly adherent to your tonsils, palate, uvula, and or nasopharynx. This grayish necrotic pseudomembrane is very difficult to remove in the beginning. If you force it, bleeding will ensue. This is unique to diphtheria. Why is it a pseudomembrane? Why not a true membrane? Because a true membrane is your lipid bilayer cell membrane. This is some necrotic tissue, not a true membrane. That's why we call it pseudomembrane in your pharynx, so pseudomembranous pharyngitis caused by Corinebacterium diphtheriae. And that's the difference between true membrane versus pseudomembrane. Pause and review. If pseudomembranous pharyngitis is caused by Corinebacterium diphtheria, who do you think causes pseudomembranous colitis, i.e. a grayish necrotic pseudomembrane in your colon? The answer is Clostridium difficile, which is today's topic. So, in a nutshell, pseudomembranous pharyngitis is caused by Corinebacterium diphtheria, which is a gram-positive rod. Is it spore-forming? No. Is it motile? No. Versus pseudomembranous colitis, which is caused by Clostridium difficile, another gram-positive rod. Is it spore-forming? Yeah. Is it motile? Yeah. For maximum understanding and retention, please watch the videos in this Microbiology and Infectious Diseases playlist in order. Clostridium difficile is a gram-positive bacillus. Spore-forming? Yeah. Aerobic? No. Motile? Yeah. It produces two famous nasty toxins. Toxin A is enterotoxin. Toxin B is cytotoxin. Toxin A damages the brush border of your intestine. Toxin B damages the cytu skeleton of your intestine. What do Clostridia have in common? These four classic archaic characteristics, but this definition is lacking. Why are Clostridia such a big deal? Because they are everywhere, because they can make spores, they produce toxins, and they can grow even when there is no oxygen. Please pause and review. Clostridium difficile. Let's review what we have talked about before. Everywhere around you. Colonizes your gut. Two famous toxins. Toxin A is enterotoxin, but toxin B is cytotoxin. Toxin A damages the brush border, but toxin B damages the cytu skeleton. The second letter of the alphabet, B, with cytu toxin, number two. Just a mnemonic to remember it. A toxin A, tell me about yourself. I am toxic to the enterocytes or the cells that line your intestine. I recruit neutrophils by chemotaxis. And these neutrophils will then infiltrate your intestine, releasing cytokines in your intestine, causing damage. Moreover, I disrupt the tight junctions between your intestinal cells. I alter the membrane permeability, leading to fluid loss. That's how I get watery diarrhea. This is how I damage the brush border. Contrast that with toxin B, the Cy2 toxic, which damages the Cy2 skeleton of your enterocytes. What's Cy2 skeleton? Oh, we have actin in them. Oops, actin depolymerization. When actin is toast, your cytoskeleton is toast, and your cyto cells are toast. Are these the only toxins produced by C. diff? Shut up, we have more. There is the binary toxin, which helps the bacteria adhere to your cells, which facilitates toxin production, etc., etc. Moreover, we have surface layer proteins, also help the C. diff bind to your enterocytes, facilitating toxin production, I'm referring to toxin A and toxin B, which lead to tissue damage. Tell me about the clinical pictures, signs and symptoms. Many people are asymptomatic. It's called asymptomatic carriage or asymptomatic colonization. I have the bacteria in my gut, 
but no symptoms whatsoever. Some people have very mild disease, form frusta, i.e. self-limiting diarrhea slash gastroenteritis. Some people have moderate disease, but some people have severe disease, pseudomembranous colitis, and the more severe, toxic megacolon. Hi, medicosis. I have C. diff living in my gut. Does that necessarily mean that I will be sick? No, not necessarily. Hey, medicosis. I have C. diff in my gut. It's producing tons of toxin A and toxin B in my gut. Does that mean that I will suffer symptoms? Not necessarily. What are the precipitating factors of C. diff pseudomembranous colitis? Well, antibiotics use, especially for a long time. Especially if the antibiotic is clindamycin. Make no mistake about it, any antibiotic can precipitate an attack caused by C. diff, but clindamycin seems to dominate. Clindamycin, here is Linda, the Catholic nun. She's wearing a cross because clindamycin covers gram positive organisms. Clindamycin also covers anaerobes, such as anaerobic bacteria causing lung abscess. These are the good news about clindamycin. The bad news is it can precipitate pseudomembranous colitis. What else? What other antibiotics can precipitate pseudomembranous colitis? We have tetracycline. We have aminopenicillins, such as ampicillin and amoxicillin. We have estriunam. We have cephalosporins, etc., etc., etc. Any antibiotic can do it. Why is that medicosis? Because antibiotics will alter the normal intestinal flora. Antibiotics kill bio. They kill living organisms, such as the bacteria living in your gut. After 5 to 10 days, you can get overgrowth of endogenous C. diff that was already there. The antibiotics killed other organisms, leaving the field empty to be dominated by C. diff. Or these antibiotics might weaken your immunity a little, making you vulnerable to acquire exogenous C. diff. Whether it's this mechanism or this mechanism, either way, you're toast. So antibiotics can lead to pseudomembranous colitis. How can we treat this condition? Guess what? Other antibiotics. As Dr. Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. Hypothesis are antibiotics good or bad? No solutions, only trade-offs. Good or bad for whom? Under what circumstances? At what price? As Dr. Jordan Peterson might say, well, it's complicated, you know. How can we treat C. diff colitis? You have three modes of transportation. You can take the metro, you can take the van, or the FedEx truck. Metro, metronidazole. The van, vancomycin. The FedEx truck, fidoxomycin. Pseudomembranous enterocolitis, or simply pseudomembranous colitis. Pseudomembrane in my colon with inflammation. Why enterocolitis? Because it can affect the small intestine and or the large intestine. The patient has medical history of long-term use of any antibiotic, especially clindamycin or tetracycline or any other antibiotic. This Clostridium difficile bacterium is a gram-positive bacillus, anaerobe, and secretes two famous toxins. Toxin A is enterotoxin. Toxin B is cytotoxin. Toxin A damages your brush border. Toxin B damages your cytoskeleton. On physical exam or signs and symptoms, abdominal pain that is crampy, diarrhea that is watery and profuse, the temperature is elevated, White blood cells are also high. Whitish, grayish, pseudomembrane on biopsy. Complications, toxic megacolon that can kill you. The patient is in the ICU with fever, high leukocytosis, low blood pressure, abdominal pain, and altered mental status. Now it's getting serious. The patient appears, quote, toxic, unquote. That's why we call it toxic megacolon. A good clinician is the one who can recognize the toxic facies, commonly seen in patients with toxemia, toxic megacolon, and organ damage like kidney failure, liver failure, etc., etc., etc. And it's called megacolon because your colon is huge if we do some imaging, such as abdominal x-ray or CT scan. How can we diagnose pseudomembranous colitis? Clinically plus try to detect the toxins not the bacteria, the toxins in the stool of the patient. 
What kind of toxins are you referring to? Toxin A is enterotoxin, toxin B is cytotoxin. How can I detect the toxin in the stool? That will be the topic of the next video. How can we manage pseudomembranous colitis? Three modes of transportation, the metro, the van, and the FedEx truck. When it's mild, you can just give one. When it's fulminant, we give a combo. Still not working? Give me that poop shake fecal microbiota transplant. We're trying to give our patient some poop from another patient. <laughs> Why are you giving them other poop? Because the other poop has normal gut flora, which will overwhelm and crowd out the nasty Clostridium difficile. Drink that poop shake, sir. There are no limits to human ingenuity. I tried all of this. Nothing seems to be working. The patient is severely sick in the ICU, not responding to any treatment, very high leukocytosis, greater than 50,000 white blood cells per microliter, and the lactate is also high in the serum. What the flip am I supposed to do? Surgery. Emergency colectomy. Remove that colon, because it's not working. It's no good. But hey, medicosis, it's not good to take the patient's colon. You know what else is not good? Leaving the patient to die from toxic megacolon. There are no solutions in life, only trade-offs. Life doesn't come with a guarantee that there are always answers at the end of the book, as the famous Dr. Thomas Sowell said. Let's review Clostridium difficile from Picmonic. Clostridium, here's the classroom. Difficile, here are some differential equations. It's a gram positive, here is my angel. It's a bacillus. Here is the rod. Anaerobe. Here is the ant in a robe. Caused by clindamycin and ampicillin. Clindamycin, cleaning mice. Ampicillin, amplifier, pencil. Clostridium difficile produces two famous toxins. Toxin A is enterotoxin. Here is toxin A, apple. Enterotoxin that damages your brush border of the your intestine. And toxin B, which is side 2 side toe toxin, which damages actin and destroys the cytoskeleton of your gut. This can lead to diarrhea, of course. Here are some toilets. Pseudomembranous colitis. Here is the somo man bra. Pseudomembranous with a colon, colitis, as well as toxic megacolon. Here is the toxin glow on a colon that is very big. How can I diagnose it? Detect the antigens in the stool. How can I treat it? The modes of transportation. You can take the metro or the van or the FedEx truck. Metronidazole, vancomycin, or fidoxomycin. For more wonderful mnemonics like these, check out Picmonic. The link is in the description below. If you like this video, you will adore my antibiotics course, which will teach you about clindamycin, ampicillin, amoxicillin, tetracycline, and many other antibiotics, plus antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. Download today at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a cardiac pharmacology course, a neuropharmacology course on my website as well. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.